Hey, good morning. It's uh, 11 o'clock on Tuesday. Yeah, Tuesday, uh, the 26th of uh, uh, September. And we're here for the Red Shoe Business Club. Uh, I've got to shut off the monitor again. I keep forgetting to do that. Hang on. I apologize. As you might guess, I have a monitor here for Zoom, and I have a monitor over there for Facebook, and the two are on a delay, and so watching myself switch back and forth uh, can be very confusing. Uh, I need to do this a little differently, but we'll work on that. Also, the sound may not be as good as uh, before. Uh, the new equipment that I bought to use for the sound is great, uh, but guess what? It has to be charged. And while I it's advertised a six hour charge uh, and I have not used it anywhere near six hours, it's quite possible that because it's new, it hasn't built up its full charge yet. So I apologize if the sound isn't quite as good today as it could be. Um, now I seem to have lost my pen. Hang on. Hiding under the, uh, it was hiding under the uh, keyboard. Hey, glad to be here with you today. Mike Wright with Tax Right. And as you know, Tax Right is the sponsor of the Red Shoe Business Club. And uh, I made a comment yesterday that I was going to keep these meetings uh, short. And uh, I blew that yesterday because it was uh, almost 20 minutes long. And that's longer than I want to keep uh, you involved. Uh, besides, if I can make them shorter and a little bit uh, more to the point, you can put several of them together. And if you only are trying to zero in on one thing, you can do that. So we'll keep working on this. Probably by the time the 30 days are up, uh, I'll have them down perfectly and I'll have to go back and do them all again. Not really. Uh, glad you're with me. Yesterday, as you will recall, we talked about record keeping. We talked about the checkbook. We talked about uh, why you want to use a bookkeeping system. Uh, preferably uh, either a spreadsheet or for the sake of both you and your accountant, you'll want to get some kind of software. I recommend QuickBooks. I still recommend QuickBooks. Uh, not going to change from that, uh, but that's not a point that I want to argue with you. If you work with an accountant that uses another software and you and that accountant are happy with it, then cool. Uh, look, the whole purpose of this stuff is so that you understand your business. And in order for that to be the case, you have to understand the information that you're getting, where it's coming from, and what it means. So that's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about financial statements. People talk about financial statements all the time. Banks will require them. If you take out an SBA loan, the SBA wants an annual financial statement. They also want copies of your tax returns. Uh, copies of your tax returns are oftentimes based on the information from uh, a financial statement. It's the kind of thing that if somebody wants to invest with you, they'll want to look at your financial statements. Now, I need to make a disclaimer here, and this is a very important disclaimer. Under the current laws of the United States, each and every state empowers certain people to provide uh, an affirmation that the records of a company are kept in accordance with generally accepted accounting principles. Those people are called CPAs, Certified Public Accountants. They're the people that can offer things up to the public with the certification that they are accurate to the best of their knowledge. This is an important function, particularly when you're dealing with investments because an investor will want to see audited financial statements. They will want to see financial statements that were certified by a certified public accountant as accurate. I have to tell you right now that I personally am not a certified public accountant. I am what's called an enrolled agent. I've mentioned that before. We'll talk about it again in the future. But what that means is that while I may know as much about accounting as a certified public accountant, I cannot sign off on a document that says that's the case. However, because I know as much about accounting as a certified public accountant, I can provide you with accurate management financial statements. These are financial statements that are 
suitable for management to make management decisions because they don't have to be shared with the public. In fact, for most closely held companies, like your company and my company, we don't want those records to be made public. We simply want to be able to use them to understand what the heck we're doing. So I needed to say that because uh, I didn't want you to think that I'm offering you advice that you could take to the bank, so to speak. But I am offering you advice that as a business owner, you can use very effectively. So having said that, let's talk about the first financial statement. This is the financial statement that most everybody knows. It's the one that most people think is the only financial statement when they're asked about financial statements. It's the profit and loss. It's the thing that shows the money that comes in, all the expenses you have, and what's left. And what's left we often call the bottom line. That's the net income of the business, or it may be the net loss of the business. This is a very important document. Uh, because it lists all of the sources of income, then you can see where the income comes from. Does it come from the sale of products? Does it come from the sale of services? Does it come from a combination of those things? Are there income streams from other sources? Perhaps the business also owns a property uh, that has several storefronts in it. They use one, but the other storefronts are rented out. So there might be income from the rental property. There might also be large investment holdings so that there's investment income. These are all the different things that are income for the business. And that's a very important thing because without income, a business does not stay around very long. Then we talk about the expenses of the business and that's the expenses are deducted from the income. I know this may sound a little strange, but the expenses are deducted from the income and what's left over is the profit. Now I'm gonna to talk to you later on about a program that's called Profit First, and that changes this formula just a little bit. But for the purposes of understanding a profit and loss statement, that's exactly what we have. If you look at any profit and loss, then you will see the income first. Then there may be a section called cost of goods sold or cost of services sold. And that's a little different than the, than the expenses of the business. And the expenses are often called overhead. And that's an, it's an important distinction. And it's one that you want to start making now, whether your business has costs of goods sold or whether it doesn't. But let me explain what that means. If you bring in money, and you spend money in order to provide uh, inventory, you spend money in order to provide labor, uh, your salespeople, your store clerks, people like that. You have money that you use to pay for your business insurance, uh, for your inventory insurance. Anything that can be directly attributed to the transactions that go on that represent your business can be considered costs of goods sold. But there are other expenses that we call overhead. And that's simply the costs that you have that are there, whether your business is doing well or whether your business is doing badly. I mentioned a little bit ago about a retail establishment that has several storefronts. Well, your uh, as, as that business, then you have the costs of maintaining that building. Now, granted, you get income from maintaining that building, from the people that are renting from you. The costs of maintaining that building, uh, the maintenance fees, the utilities, the sewer charges, all of those things are costs of goods sold. But let's say that you are a one of the retail establishments in that building. You're going to receive your money from the sales that you make in your business, but the rent that you pay for your storefront that rent that you pay goes on whether your business is doing well or whether your business is doing badly. That rent represents overhead. 
because it's not part of your business activity. It's simply something that you have to pay in order to do business. Oftentimes when I'm do, uh, working with a manufacturing plant, a small machine shop, something like that, we have the laborers, but we also have office staff. We have a receptionist, or perhaps we have a bookkeeper. The, the labor for the laborers, the people that do the machine shop work, are included in cost of goods sold. But the receptionist and the bookkeeper are part of overhead because if the they still have to have somebody keep track of that stuff, whether the business does well or not. But all of these expenses, whether they're costs of goods sold or whether they're overhead expenses, are deducted from the income that comes in, and that's what creates the profit or the loss. And that's why we call it a profit and loss statement. The second and equally important financial statement is the balance sheet. In many ways, the balance sheet is more important than the profit and loss statement, because particularly if your business has a loss, because if your business is losing money, it may still have a value. It may still have wealth. What is profit? What is the balance sheet? What's the formula there? The formula there is assets equal liabilities plus equity. Assets is the stuff you own. Assets is the money in the bank. Assets uh, could be investments. Assets, uh, like I said, stuff that you own, fixed assets like buildings. Uh, there could be short-term assets, maybe like vehicles or different things that uh, rotate in and out very rapidly. These are all things that you own and they all have a value. And you set up that value and that are the assets. I'm not gonna go into details about things like depreciation and so forth. We'll talk about that when we do the session concentrating on the balance sheet. So those are the assets, that's what you've got. Then you have liabilities. I mentioned liabilities yesterday when we were talking about uh, the checkbook and expenses that you pay that were not expenses. Well, liabilities are items that you owe money on over time. And this can be as diverse as the mortgage or the value, I'm sorry, the mortgage on the building. Remember, you have the value of the building up in the assets, but the mortgage on that building is a liability until it's paid in full. Uh, you may also have things like accounts payable. These are uh, charges that have been made and haven't been paid yet. Uh, you know, maybe you're on a 30-day note or something like that. Or you could even have longer-term notes, money that you've borrowed and you have to pay back. Again, let me refer to yesterday's conversation when we talked about the fact that if you write a check uh, to pay for that loan, part of that check is a reduction of the loan liability. The other part is the expense of the interest. And if we were looking at the two sheets side by side, uh, you would see the interest over on the profit and loss, but you'd see the decrease in the liability for the business over on the balance sheet. But if your business is doing, if your business is still in existence, then once you deduct all of the liabilities from the assets, then you have what's called equity. It's what's left over. It's the real worth of the company. It is what the company is working for. Now, if you consistently have a profit and loss statement that's losses, it's conceivable that your equity can be negative uh, because it has to be negative. If you have money in the bank at all and you have liabilities, you have to have negative equity to make that balance work out. That's what the balance sheet balances, assets against liabilities and equity. But as your business brings in more income, as you have more positive income years over on the income statement, that increases the equity of the business because now what's left over becomes the equity. Uh, we can do some interesting things tax-wise with equity. You can do some interesting things uh, creating wealth-wise with equity. So you have to have some equity at some point, but that's what a balance sheet is all about. And then there's the least known financial statement.
the statement of cash flows. Cash flows. In every business, money moves through it. Some of the money comes from loans. Some of the money comes from sales. Some of the money comes from investments. Some of the money goes out for expenses. Some of the money goes out to pay off loans. Some of the money goes out uh, to increase the equity of the company. The statement of cash flows ties the other two statements together because it allows you to understand what the financial situation of your business is. Real briefly, that's one of the things that I use to distinguish between a real business and all the others. A real business is a business that operates largely from income from the business operation and only a little bit from financing or investments. Other businesses sometimes operate largely from manipulating funds through lending or through stock transactions in order to provide the cash they need uh, to operate. Businesses that are not real businesses, by this definition, would be places like General Motors or Ford Motor Company, uh, places like Apple, places that continually increase the, uh, Apple's not a good example. Let me take that back. Let's stick with Ford Motor and General Motors, because these are companies that operate using money that they borrow, and part of the money that they borrow is, is then borrowed to pay back the money they borrowed before. So it's a flow of cash. Insurance companies are very much like this because insurance companies have, have no product to provide. The only income that they have aside from premiums is the money that they uh, make from investments uh, and from manipulating the funds in their various accounts. As a real business, you don't wanna get involved in this. A real business is a business that if you look at the statement of cash flows, you see that most of the cash that flows through that business originated in the business operation itself and not in all of the other stuff. There may be other stuff. There's nothing wrong with having other stuff, uh, but that's not what makes the business function and operate. So, well, in keeping with my promise to stay under 10 minutes, I failed again because I see it's quarter after 11, uh, but this is a brief discussion of financial statements. Now, over the next several days, uh, or next couple of weeks, I'll have individual topics where we'll go into more depth on both the, on all three of these kinds of financial statements, so keep that in mind. Remember, the Red Shoe Business Club is here to help you understand things. So if you have questions, if what I've said here intrigues you and you wanna know more about something in particular, put a comment. Send me a comment on Facebook. Send me a comment uh, on YouTube when this finally gets published to YouTube. Shoot, send me an email, mike at taxright.net, and let me know what's on your mind. Also, don't forget that next Tuesday, a week from today, uh, at 9 o'clock, we're doing a uh, quarterly analysis. And if you'll check me out uh, online, you'll find out how to sign up for that. I think you might find it worthwhile. And it certainly will go along with what we talked about today. So for today, that's it. Thanks for joining me. See you tomorrow.